welcome to the channel. I am Summer. Today we are doing a haircut comparison tutorial. I know you guys love those. We are going to be comparing long layers versus short layers. I'm going to be breaking down the benefits of each, why you might want one over the other. So let's get started. Okay, so we are starting right off. I've already got her sectioned off. We've got it right at the ear, front is clipped back. And then this other side I have completely clipped out of the way because this left side is going to be where we do our long layers. And here on the right side, we're going to be doing the short layers. So we're just gonna hop right into it. I'm gonna be cutting these like a round layer for the most part. My long layers though, I'll probably do more like a square. We'll see, see how I'm feeling at the time. So what I like to do is come in, if you're new here, I take about half an inch size sections. And when you are creating your layers, you wanna make sure that every section you take when you're getting your new hair is always similar in size to the section before. So to do my short layers, what I do, I start from the bottom and work my way up. A lot of people will start at the top, but I've just always found this to work for me. I'm gonna come in with my comb. I usually like the fine side of my comb to be underneath so it grabs that hair a little bit more tight. And what I'll do is we're gonna come straight out. You're gonna lightly let that perimeter fully full. So what this does is it keeps your baseline to be a little bit thick where you're not cutting into that. So I'll show you one more time. We're coming out, that perimeter has fallen and I will just cut. Come up. I see my previous guide. Cut. And you're just rounding all the way up with the head. And then what you'll find when you let out that top layer or your section, the top layer still has a nice swoop bend to it. So you'll be able to get that bounce and it flows nice. So as these go down, they round out, but your shortest piece is still in that occipital region and you're gonna get a good swoop there to get lots of volume. And um, when we go to dry, I usually do a little dry cutting as well. So we're gonna take our next section. And what you'll do is you'll take a little bit of your new section, comb this forward, and then you're gonna come back from your previous section, and this will be your new section of hair to cut. So you've got a little bit of your old guide and a new spot of hair. That's gonna keep things nice and even for you. So come out, let that perimeter fall, cut. So I'm gonna repeat these same steps through this whole entire back side. And then when we get to the front side sections, I will show you how I adjust to keep those short. <clears throat> but the shorter the layer, typically you have more movement, more volume and body. But with that comes a little bit more of a commitment as far as your styling goes, the time that it takes to style. It's not gonna be as low maintenance versus a longer layer is a little bit easier to style and work with on a day-to-day -day basis where short layers require a little bit more work when you're doing the blow dry or if you're curling it, flat ironing it, all that type of thing. come in to, oh, I'll cut this in half. So we'll have two more sections. So our second to last section, we're kind of rounding in here, getting closer to the ear. Make sure always that perimeter falls so you never cut into it. Okay. 
And this will be our last section now on our back area. <clears throat> I'm still working with that fine side of the comb on the bottom to get some nice tension. Cut. So now when I go to check my back short layers before moving into the sides, so these were round. We're rounding with the head and we're coming up like this. To check them, I'm actually going to do more of a square layer where I bring everything up. So instead of a vertical parting, we're doing horizontal. And you're just gonna comb it. We're gonna comb straight up. And you can see here where there's a little bit more length in our center from where are these sides, <clears throat> excuse me, got a little shorter and you're just gonna even those out and then you'll take your next section. Same thing, you're gonna comb straight up and just even that out. So after I've done that very top, what I'll do is I'll let this fall again and I'm just gonna take similar size sections to how we did at the beginning and I'm just gonna bring it out and I lightly will twist and I'll just cut out any new hairs, leftover hairs, I should say new hairs, to blend that in. Just a little bit in that little bottom area. Okay, so now that we have the back done, we're gonna move into the side and you can see this is a much shorter layer here up top. We've got some good gap there. This is gonna have a nice swoop still to get that body. And we're gonna work our way into our sides. So with shorter layers, you typically can get a little bit more volume in the hair just because shorter layers naturally are gonna remove more weight from the hair because you're taking more length out. Um, but with that, you have to be careful because if you have really fine hair or thinner hair, you don't have as much wiggle room with creating those layers. If you create too short of a layer with thinner hair, you're gonna end up getting holes throughout the hair. And then depending on where your areas are thinner, you have to adjust. So you still can do shorter layers with thin or finer hair. You just have to sort of customize them a little bit is how I like to describe it. They can be done. I have a couple of short layered, shorter layered tutorials that are specifically geared towards those with finer and thinner hair that I will link in the description and pinned comment below. So be sure to check those out if you fall into that category. So that way you can see the technique that I do that helps you maintain still that nice perimeter line. So when you're coming into the sides, you're gonna take your first section, we're still a little bit behind the ear here, and I like to over direct slightly back when starting to create my side layers. In this area, it tends to get a little bit thinner naturally. The hairline is moving up. You don't have quite as low of the perimeter here, so that changes the way the hair lays. So I like to over direct slightly back, meaning I pull back towards me. So instead of coming straight out from the head, from my section, I'll turn her this way. So I'm not coming straight off of the head. We're gonna slightly angle it back, not a ton, because if the more you angle it back, you're gonna get a longer layer. So instead of coming straight out, we're just lightly extending that back to soften it up. Make sure to let that perimeter line fall completely. This is super important around the ear. And you're gonna follow your guide. So I can see here, my guide is right there. Cut. And I usually like to get to this point at the ear and then I start after this piece working the face frame. So again, we're slightly over directing back. You're gonna twist, let that fall, cut. Okay, so now I like to opt at this point to work in the face frame just because I feel like it blends a little bit easier to do it this way. 
um, rather than if you take the layer, depending on how short someone wants to go, you might cut too much out of the face frame. So I like to create my face frame and then I'll blend in um, my layers afterwards. But we're gonna be doing, you know, right in this little cheekbone region. So there's a nice shorter face frame, not too long, still get plenty of movement. And we're just gonna work in little triangle sections at a time. So we're coming down. I'm looking at my guide here, sort of that nose cheekbone area. And we're just gonna cut and sliver down. Lot of length removed. I'm slightly pulling it forward a little bit towards me. I see my last section here, sliver down. And usually I like to keep moving back of my sides. So I'm now back to that original parting where we're at the ear and extend it forward to blend in our length in the face frame. Just very little right there at the bottom. And what I'll do is I'll grab all of this back hair and I can really see that last little tail that's sticking out and cut it. And then so now what I'll do to layer this up a little bit more, because sometimes the face frame can remain a little too heavy if you don't layer it. So what I'll do is I just come in, I grab this hair, we're gonna bring everything forward and you're gonna lightly twist and cut that hair to just create a little bit more of a layer to remove a little bit more weight and bulk in the hair so you get that nice movement. Usually the face frame with shorter layers is the part that gets really tricky with like thinner, fine hair types. Um, like my hair specifically, I have what I call like my little receded points underneath here in this front section. If I cut too much into my face frame, I lose the weight underneath because I don't have as much hair that grows. So I like to keep these pieces long around my face. You can cut them shorter, but you have to just really tweak it. Um, so if you're cutting your own hair at home, always leave it longer at first. Only do like the very, very top section and you wouldn't wanna cut into these pieces here if you are like me with what I call my little receded lines or really explain to your stylist that and that you want just like sort of a very outer face frame that you don't wanna to touch the underneath at all, just kind of like that very top section. So now that we have our short side done, I'm just gonna clip this out of the way and we will wait to see what this looks like after I get it dry if we need any more tweaking. And now we're gonna do the long layer. So the long layers I find to be easier to do. They're less time consuming just because you're not creating as much movement and shape in the hair. You'd still wanna section off where you have your back separate from the front. And I like to do these more of like a square. So we're gonna come in like we did to check our round layers. You're gonna start at the top and you're gonna take a horizontal section. You're gonna bring it straight up you know, obviously depending on how long the hair is, this would change, but whoop. this hair is quite, it's like mid length, you know, it's just right at the shoulders. So I typically with a longer layer, the short layer we had was what, about right here. Longer layers, you're typically only wanting to remove about the last like two inches of hair. So that's what I sort of base it off of. You're gonna come in, you're just gonna comb straight up. See your guide, I will bring this hair back down. See if I need to extend it more. You can always remove less hair if you want, because you can always go back and cut more and just cut, that easy. And then what you'll do, we're gonna let that back down. That's perfect, I can remove more if I need to after the fact. 
but you're gonna come in, just take your next section, go straight across. And we're gonna comb everything straight up to the same point. There's no over directing, everything just comes straight up. And you'll find with these longer layers, because they're long, you're not really gonna have much hair that you cut. Probably after this section, they might this might not even come up. And it doesn't, but I have this little baby nip right there. There's literally, it's so easy. So yeah, it's super fast, the long layers are. You could come at them too, doing them round, and I'll show you guys really quick. So what you would do, you would come out the same, as you did your round layer, you let that perimeter fall. You have just a little bit of hair here to cut. It's not nearly as much as we did before. And you could still round it out. You're just taking way less hair to cut. Because again, you're keeping a longer look. It's gonna be a lot less movement, but a lower maintenance as far as cutting goes. So I'll do another piece to show you. And doing it this way is still very like time, not as time consuming. It's just taking less hair for longer layers, honestly, and how you cut it. And doing the square layers is about the fastest way to do it. But the thing that's nice about long layers is you get the movement in the hair, but like I said before, it's a lot less maintenance. It's easier to style on your own at home. Um, you can still get volume and movement with it. It's just gonna be a little less extreme compared to a shorter layer, just because you keep more weight in your hair naturally because you have that length. And then obviously if you have like thinner, extremely fine hair, a longer layer is gonna be a little bit more ideal just because you're removing less hair. Right, and then we will let out this other side. And then what I like to do for my long layers, I will do like the short layers where I over direct back, but I do it quite a bit more extreme where I'm really over directing back a lot. So I literally will extend all the way back, let all that fall, cut what hair you have left out. So all the way back, cut. Next section. All the way back, we're twisting. Perimeter has fallen, cut. Perfect. So with both haircuts, whether you're doing long layers or short layers, I still always like to come in and do the face frame before I cut any additional layers. I just feel like it gives me the most control as far as how much I remove here because you can see it exactly how it's laying. So again, this is a long layer. We're not cutting anywhere near as short as that side. We're gonna keep it lower, typically a good inch below the chin. Most people with longer layers wanna be able to tuck the hair behind their ears, or they wanna be able to get it back into a pony still. So we're going well below that jawline. Still gonna work in sections. So I'm coming right in the front here. I'm gonna take my first piece of hair to set my guy. We're below that chin by quite a bit. Come in. Sliver. So we've got a nice length here, but it still removes actually a decent amount to have a nice angle. And we're gonna take our next section and you're just gonna follow that guide through. So come in. 
I see my guide is up here. It's hard to see, this hair is very dark. But come in and sliver. And then you're gonna still take that hair, same as the short layer face frame, work your way to the back. And normally you don't have as much hair to remove because you've left it longer. And now I'm gonna just come in and finish off the layering here for the front. We're gonna again bring everything forward, but I'm gonna over direct it to the opposite side of the face because with the over directing, you're keeping more length. So straight out, and as you come straight out, we're gonna be working over, twisting, and you have just a little bit of hair there to cut. And you can even lift it up if you want. Cut. And then you're just gonna continue to take till you get to just behind the ear. Again, we're coming forward. Over, twist, and Yep, cut. Last section. Nice and easy. It is a lot less time consuming, the longer layers. So I'm gonna go ahead and get her blown out so that way we can see the after. You can already tell how different they look even wet. So I can't wait to see it dry and do a comparison and see what you guys think. All right, here we have our final look. I'll do a little bit of slow-mo so you guys can see our shorter layers here on our right side, lots of movement. And then moving into the long layers, you see it is a much softer, more minimal look. So to show you guys now live, you got all this movement here with these shorter layers. A ton, a ton of movement. They're all over the place. You can also see that there's more length removed. And that's because when you cut into the shorter face framing, you're removing that length that's right in the face where the long layer, we maintain honestly a lot more length. But if you look at the back, the actual length is the same. That's just how different and game changing it can be in the front, depending on whether you like a longer or shorter layer. Again, you can see we've got our longer layer on this side. There's movement. It's very soft. It's a more sleek look and subtle, but there is some shape to it. You've got a distance here, but the shorter layer, it really comes in and there is just a ton, a ton ton of layers everywhere. If you have finer, thinner hair and you want short layers, I will link below tutorials I have done in the past that I customize it a little bit different and kind of walk you through a little bit better on how to customize it for either yourself or to have done in salon with a stylist. And then the long layer is pretty easy and basic. I'll list some long layer tutorials as well if you want to see one more in depth. But I really like either. I'll be curious to hear what you guys prefer. I have a feeling I know which one you might like more, but I always love a good comparison. You kind of can't go wrong with both. It all just comes down to personal preference and what you like yourself and what you feel like you're gonna be able to maintain on your own as far as styling and upkeep. I hope you all enjoyed today's tutorial and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.